Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to solve a really, really exciting and practical problem, which is 0-1 knapsack. Right? It's a DP question, and over here we have its objective, which I already have over here. Right? So if we read the objective, it says that we are provided with a number n, which represents the count of items. So we will be provided with items. Then it says that you are given n numbers representing the values of n items. So each item will have some value, corresponding value. Then it again says that you have n other numbers which will be representing the weights of uh, all of those items, right? So each item will have its weight and value. So over here, each item will have its corresponding weight and value. Okay. Then it says that you're given a number cap, which is the capacity of the bag that you have. Then you are also provided with a bag. Other than the items, you are also provided with a bag which would have certain capacity which is capped. Right? So these are the inputs provided. Okay, what does the question want from us now? It says that you are required to calculate and print the maximum value that can be created in the bag without overflowing its capacity. What does this mean? From the given set of items, you have to pick items such that the sum of the set that you are making after picking the items has its summation of weights smaller than equal to the capacity being provided then only you would be able to fit those inside your bag right and on top of that you have to find such set that has maximum value out of all of these right so you would have sets which can fall under the category which satisfy the capacity of the bag and in all of those sets you have to pick the set which has maximum value right and the value is summation of all the values of the items inside the bag all right the note over here says that each item can be taken zero or one number of times right and you are not allowed to put the same item again and again that means simple you cannot break the items uh, into smaller pieces you can either take the entire item or you can leave the entire item, right and also you have limited number of items you have just one particular unique item associated to each and every value that you have been given that means there is no repetition that is allowed right you can pick an item only single number of times okay if it's not clear if the question is not clear let's take an example let's suppose you are a pilot very hard working pilot right very very hard working pilot and you are on a conquest of searching treasures all around the world and when you are roaming around the world maybe suddenly someday you found a cave Right, you found a cave. Right, you went inside the cave. You went inside the cave, and you had a treasure box over there. The treasure box had precious stones. Treasure box contained precious stones, each having its own worth and own weight. Okay, as a pirate, you had your charming bag. Yeah, good, good charm, of course. So what you did was you went inside the cave. And you started picking the stones. Sadly, your bag could only fit certain amount of weight. So you could pick only a few of the stones that you had available in front of you. Right? You have to pick all of the stones such that in your bag you have the maximum value, right? You get the most worth out of it. You can take the most worth out of the treasure that you have just found. Right? If, the, if you cannot re-enter the cave, right? If you get out of the cave and you cannot re-enter the cave, as a pirate, you would want maximum value in the very first iteration itself, right? You would go inside, you would get the maximum value out of it. You won't say, okay, I would come in the second iteration because that's not allowed. There is there's a constraint that only one iteration is allowed. You can go inside only once. So if you're coming out and you know you won't be uh, able to access the treasure once again, ever again, then you would work hard to make sure that you are getting the maximum value in your bag, right? Maximum treasure. This is what zero and knapsack is. You have to pick maximum value out of the given items in your bag, such that your bag can hold only a certain amount of capacity. This is what zero and knapsack is, right? I hope it's a bit clear. The question is a bit clear with the example. Now, what we can do is we can take a sample input to discuss it a bit better. Now, let's suppose for input, I have uh, five items, right? And five of those items are having weights and values. And let's suppose uh, weights are two, five, one, 
and the values are 15, 14, 10, 45, 50, right? And let's suppose the capacity that is being provided is of 7, right? So my back can hold a maximum value of 7. Now, to answer this, if I write the output for this question, the output would be 75, right? The output to this question is 75. This is by using these two items of 3 and 4 weight. So the weight is equal to 7. And if we look at the values, which is 45 and 30, if we add them both, we get 35. Of course, there are other sets which fall under the category that they sustain the capacity of the bag. But this is the set which has the maximum value out of all of them. Right? If we take the first two elements, which are having weight 5 and 2, if we add them both up, we get 7, right? So this also satisfies. But if we look at the values that they provide, it's 14 and 15. That is a total of 29. So the value that they generate is just 29, right? But in this case, it's 75, not 55, 75, right? Hence, this is the set that has maximum value, okay? Now, I hope the question is clear. And I would want you to try this question on your own first. If you get stuck somewhere, take the help of either the tutorial or the solution video. And uh, I'll see you. Right? Uh, now, let's discuss the solution to this question. Now, the solution would be of the type of DP, of course. Now, if we recall, in previous, in past, we have solved questions like target subsets. We have solved many other questions like count encodings and stuff in which we use the principle of inclusion and exclusion, right? Now, if we try to relate that concept with the question that we have in hand, which is zero and knapsack, what we can do is at every step, we can either decide if we want to include the particular item or if we want to exclude the particular item, right? That is, if I include the item, what is the value that I get rather than uh, if I exclude that item? Right. So I can basically maximize the step in which I include and exclude an item. I can see what is the value that I'm getting after including an item and what is the value I'm, that I'm getting after excluding an, an item. One and two. And whatever is the maximum of these two is something that I would be doing. I would either include or exclude an item. Right. So as this is a DP solution, the three steps that we do of course, the very first step, which is assigning storage, right? And median. Second is, of course, deriving a direction. Third is traversing and solving, right? So to do this question, I've already created a 2D DP over here. This is a 2D DP integer array of size n plus one, Cross capacity plus one, right? So for the question, for the test case that we just discussed, uh, where we had five different different elements and capacity of seven, this is the 2D DP array that we have created, right? Let's look at the meaning of each and every position, right? So what would be the meaning of this point, let's suppose, right? If I draw this with red, right, this point. So this is DP of two, Six. This would mean by using first two items, what is the maximum value that I can generate when the capacity is six? Right? By using these two items, what is the maximum capacity that I can generate at six? This is what it means. Right? If I take another example, let's suppose this. Right? This is what this is DP of five, seven. What does this mean? This means by using five elements, five of the items that we that we have, that means all of these items, right? All of these items. And with the capacity of seven, what is the maximum value that I can generate? So with five items and seven as the capacity. Isn't this our question itself? Our question says that for all of these items and the capacity of seven, what is the maximum value that I can generate? Right, so this particular point will be my answer, right? So this is nothing but my answer over here, dp of 5, 7, which is dp of 
in capital right this would be my answer now if you observe we have zero over here right we have one indexed all of these items are now one index so very first item is not starting from zero it's starting from one what does the first column signify first column signifies that for zero items what is the maximum value that i can generate can I generate any value using zero items? I cannot, right? So that means this would always remain zero because if we are not using any item, then the value is automatically zero. Now, if we observe the very first column, the very first column says that what can be the maximum value when the capacity is zero, right? If the capacity is zero, can I fill anything in the bag? If my bag cannot withstand anything, that means its capacity is zero. Can I fill anything in the bag? No, I cannot. That means that the first column itself would also be filled with zeros throughout. Right? Now, now that we know two things out of three, what the very first thing, assigning storage and meaning. Now we know the storage and the meaning, the direction in which we have to solve. We know that where we would get our answer. We would get our answer in the very last row and column the very last cell that exists right so we would walk we would move in this direction forward and downwards right so if you come over here the direction is forward and downwards right now the last step which is traversing and solving so let's see how we can do that again keep in mind inclusion and exclusion principle that we talked about right we would get two different values after including or excluding an element and we would see which value is greater and according to that we would place our element right so if i erase the size part and if we now run this now what does dp of one and one mean this means that for the very first element which has a weight of two what is the maximum value that i can generate when my capacity is one can i fill my first element when the bag's capacity is one given that the weight of the first item is two no right i can only and only fit an item inside the bag if the weight of the item is greater than equal to capacity of the bag which is current capacity which is j let's suppose these columns are denoted with j right if my weight is smaller than equal to j then only i can place it right other than that, I can only exclude it. So at this point, I can either exclude this particular item or include this particular item. But as the capacity is one, I have no other option rather than excluding it, right? So if I exclude the very first item, if I exclude the very first item, what is the cause that I have? For that, I have to look at the previous row, right? The cell just in the previous row, right? This would mean, what would this mean? The maximum value that I was able to generate when the capacity was the same, but I was not using my item, right? Till the items before me, right? Which is zero. So this becomes zero itself. Now the capacity of the bag is two and the weight of my item is also two. That means I can both include and exclude my item. So if I include my item, Right. If I include my item, then the current capacity, which is two, I would subtract my weight from it. Right. As my weight is two, two minus two would give me zero. What I would do is I would check for capacity equivalent to zero. What was the maximum value that was generated when I wasn't included? Right. So for that, I would go two steps back, which is my weight, and I would check the previous row. Previous row would contain the data of maximum values that was generated when I wasn't included in the answer, right? As I'm including myself already, I have to check when I was not included in the answer, what was the maximum value? And for that, I would check for previous row, right? And over here, as we have zero, that means if I include myself, I would get 15 as value. Plus, I won't get anything because the maximum value before me was zero. This is when I include myself. What happens if I exclude myself? 
When I exclude myself, I, I just check for previous row, which is zero. So if I exclude myself, I'm not having any kind of value, right? Because before me, there was no item or there was no item present. I'm the very first item, right? So if I see my inclusion is greater than my exclusion, right? So I have to include myself at this point, right? So what I would do is I would include myself. And if I include myself, I would get 15 over here. Again, when the weight, current weight is three, if I exclude myself, I would get zero. If I include myself, I would get 15 plus zero, which is 15, 15 over here. Again, if I include myself, if I include myself, I would get zero and 15, which is zero plus 15 is 15. And if I exclude myself, I would get zero, which is 15, right? Throughout this row, as I cannot include anything other than me, right? Because I am the very first item, everything would be 15. Hope it's clear. Because I am the very first item, because I am the very first item, I know that the row previous than me, before than me, would be zero. So after the capacity which can sustain me, my answer would be equivalent to my own value, right? Again. Now. We have processed the very first element. This is done. Now we would process this element, which is having a weight of five and value of 14. Right? Now, as it has a weight of five, it can only be included after this point. Up till this point, it has to be excluded always. Right? That means at this position, when the capacity is one, if excluded, it would get maximum value of zero. If excluded, it would get a maximum value of 15, right? So if I had a bag which had a capacity of two, I filled it with two with 15, and then I excluded five and 14, right? This would give me a total value of 15, right? So I exclude myself, I exclude myself and I get 15. Again, I get 15, again, I get 15. Now at this point, what I can do is I can either exclude myself or include myself. So let's see, if I include myself, if I include myself, I would of course get my own value. Plus I would get the value that was maximum mine when, when the capacity is five minus five, which is zero, right? If I'm including myself, that means I'm using the capacity of five. And if my bag was of capacity of five, I have, I have left with, I'm left with zero capacity. So the left out capacity is zero, right? And the maximum that was generated without me at that capacity was zero, right? So I can either have 14 over here because 14 plus zero is 14. Or if we check or check for exclusion now, if we exclude myself, if I exclude myself, if I exclude myself, I can generate a maximum of 15 right if i don't include myself then for the capacity of five till my previous item the maximum value that was being generated was 15 that means 14 versus 15 it's better if i exclude myself what i would do is i would exclude myself i hope it was clear it was really important if you didn't quite get it wait uh to this point after this we would be able to derive all the possible situations right now if i move to six that means my current capacity is six again i can either include myself or exclude myself right if i exclude myself let's suppose if i exclude myself that means i'm not including myself what was the maximum value that was generated when the capacity was the same but i was not included which is the previous row which is 50 right so if i exclude myself i would get 50. what if i include myself if i include myself i would surely get 14 and with the remaining capacity, that is six minus five, remaining capacity of one, what was the maximum value that was generated? The maximum value was that was generated was zero again, right? So 14 plus zero gives me 14. 15 versus 14, again, it's better if I exclude myself, right? So I hope you see what we are doing is we are checking for inclusion and exclusion and where we get the maximum value, I'm doing that for the particular item. Right. Now, 
if you move to capacity of 7, if I exclude myself again, the maximum value that I get from previous row, of course, is 15, right? And if I include myself, I'm getting 14 plus what I would get is DP, I'm writing the formula over here now, DP of my previous row, right? So the previous row is, let's suppose, R minus 1. And what was the column? The column would be the current column, which is the current capacity minus my own weight. So the current capacity, which is J minus my own weight, which is WT, right? So if we see J minus WT, which is 7 minus 5, which is 2, and the previous row, it's 15. So 14 plus 15 over here, right? Which is 29. That means at 7, I can include myself. And after inclusion 2, I can make a maximum value of 15, right? So if I include myself, I would get 29 value. If I exclude myself, I can make a maximum of 15 value, right? Of course, inclusion wins in this case. So that means I would include myself finally, which is 29 value, right? So we have processed these two items, right? Let's quickly run through the rest of the items. Okay, let's not erase that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so this is also processed. Now, 1 for 10, right? 0 won't do anything. For 1 for 10, can I fill? when capacity is 1. Of course, I can because the weight is equivalent to the capacity. That means I can include myself. If I include myself, 10 plus 0, which is 10, right? Exclusion would have given me 0. Inclusion gives me 10. Of course, 10 wins. Now, in this case, I can include myself or exclude myself, right? If I include myself, I would get 10 plus 0, which is 10. Exclude myself, I would get 15. So, 15 wins. Now, in this case, if I exclude myself, I would get 15. But if I include myself, I would get 10 plus 15 which is 25, right? Hence I get 25 over here. Again at this place, exclusion would give me 15, inclusion would give me 10 plus 15, which is 25. At this point too, 25, 25. Now at this point, exclusion would give me 29, right? Exclusion would give me 29. And inclusion would give me 25. Exclusion wins. It's better if I don't include myself let the rest of the two elements stay in the back, right? That means 29 over here, right? Now this is also processed. For 3 of 45, again, I won't be doing anything up till here because the capacity is smaller than the weight itself. So I would only exclude myself. That means 10 and 15 over here, right? Now from 3, from 3, I can I then include myself or exclude myself. So if we see over here, if I exclude myself, what do I get? I get 25 as value, right? If I exclude myself, I get 25. And if I include myself, I would get what? My own value, which is 45. And I would check for this position, which is zero. So 45 plus zero is zero. But if I include myself, I would still get 45. That means I would be including myself and getting 45 as value, right? Now, at this point, at this point, if you see, if I exclude myself, if I exclude my, myself at this point, I would get 25 as value, right, at this point. And if I include myself, I would get 45 plus 10, which is 55, right, because this minus 3 gets me to this point, right, which is 10. So. 45 plus 10, which is 55. So, of course, inclusion wins in this case too. Hence, we we'll just erase this and this, and we have 55 over here. Right? Now, again over here, we have 25 in exclusion. And in inclusion, what do we have? We have our own value, 45. And if you go back, we have 15 from here, right? So, 14, 45 plus 15, which is 60, right? So 25 versus 60, 60 me wins. That means I should include myself at this point, right? So again, at this point, it's 25, 25 versus over here, if we come, this is 25, right? So if I exclude myself, we have 25. And if I include myself at this point, I will go back three positions. 
I would check it's 25. So if I include myself, I would get 45 plus 25, which is 70. Of course, 70 wins, right? So we remove this. Yeah. So we have 70 over here, right? Again, at this point too, what we would have is in exclusion, we would have 29. And in inclusion, if we see again, which, which it's the 25, 45 plus 25 gives us 70. 70 wins comes over here, right? And therefore, we have processed this item. Now we would be working for the very last item, right? And the very last item could only be included after this point, right? Because before this, the capacity is smaller than the weight itself. That means it can only be excluded in these three parts. Now, when the capacity is four, I can either include myself or exclude myself again. So if I exclude myself, if I exclude myself at this point, I would get 55 as value. And if I include myself, I would get 30 as value, right? So I exclude myself, right? I'm maximizing, right? So over here in fifth position, if I include my exclude myself, I would get 60. If I include myself, I would get 30 plus 10. So we have 30 plus 10, which is 40. Right? So 40 versus 60, 60 wins. That means I should not exclude my, I should exclude myself. Right? Let rest of the items fill the dark. Okay. For value 6, what should we do? For value 6, if we do 6 minus 4, we go to 6 minus 4, this point, right? Okay. So 6 minus 4 lends us at this point, which is 30 plus 15. 30 plus 15 gives us 45, right? So if I include myself, I would get 45. But if I exclude myself, I'm getting 70. That means I should exclude myself and let the rest of the items fill the back. Now for the very last position, let's see, let's see, right? So very, very last position in which I, if I ex include myself, then I would get my own value, which is 30. And then I would go four places back and I would check the maximum value, which is 45, right? So 30 plus 45 will give me 75. If I include myself, I'm getting 75. If I exclude myself, I'm getting 70. That means over here, the maximum value that I can generate is 75 after including myself, right? And this is where my answer was. And this is what my answer is. So 75 is my answer. I hope you understood how I traversed it, uh, traversed through it, and how we got the answer, and how inclusion and exclusion principle is something that we utilize for maximizing our result. Let's uh, try to code this now, right? So, if we take this to full screen, what I want to take in input is two arrays, right? So first of all is the number of items. Then is the weights array. And of course, okay, let's see. Okay, so the very first one is the values array. Yeah. If I write over here, for int i equals zero, i goes to n, i plus plus, right? So value of i take as input and then I have my weights array which is new int n for int i equals to 0 i equals to n i plus plus and weights of is equal to new int of n. Okay sorry this is c dot next. Right. Now, after the values and the weights, what I have is the capacity. So I would take cap as input c dot next. Right. Okay. Now that you have taken the input, what I would do from here is solution. Very first step is to assign storage. 
what was my storage my storage was a 2 ddp integer array of size uh n plus one n capacity plus one so integer dp is equal to new int n plus one cross cap plus one right now what was my base case my base case was that my zeroth row and zeroth column will be zero now as the default value in java for all the integer in uh, integer spaces in the array are zero we don't need to initialize that so we can move forward and we can traverse now how do we traverse we traverse from we we traverse through the columns from one till the capacity of the column for each and every element so we process each and every element one after the other right so very first loop would be for all the elements which is going from zero till one till n actually because the zero throw is our base case right and over here what we would have yeah so over here what we would have is value which would be i minus one as it's one index as we saw and we would have weight which will be weight of i minus one right for each of the items we are traversing through the capacity so i is already used so j goes from one till j is capacity j plus plus now what we have to do is we have to check if we have to check if my weight if my j which is the current capacity is greater than equal to my weight if my current capacity is greater than equal to my weight then only i can include myself right then only i can include myself that means dp of ij would be math dot match i minus one j dp of i minus one j minus of weight right plus my value so if you see over here this part is my exclusion and this part is my inclusion right this is the formula that we wrote for inclusion if this is not the case i can only exclude myself that means dp of i j would always be dp of i minus one j right after running through these loops after traversing and solving i would have my answer at I would have my answer at dp of n in capacity. So system dot out dot print in. We have n and capacity over here. Right. Let's run this and see if it works. So it does work for the test case. Let's submit and run for all the test cases that we have. And it works. We are getting 10 out of 10. So I hope you understood what we did over here. Right? So go back and look at how we were including and excluding. So this is my inclusion. Sorry, this is my exclusion. What we are doing over here is just checking for the previous row for the same capacity. So this is my exclusion. And this over here is my inclusion. Right, and we are writing this if, if conditions to uh, make sure that we don't get index out of bond. And if uh, we are not able to include, then of course this is for exclusion. Right, what we are doing is we are maximizing both of them. We are maximizing both of them, and we are keeping that value in the DP of IJ. And at last, we would get our answer over. So I hope you understood. Uh, you can go back and watch the dry run again and keep in mind the code that we have written right so talking about the complexity of this uh, the time complexity is o of n cross cap right to generalize o n square and what is the space complexity space complexity again we're using a 2d integer dp of size n plus one cap plus one so it's also of course n cross cap size 
along so one square to generalize right okay so i hope you understood i hope you understood how we used inclusion exclusion principle to maximize our solution uh, if you like the video please uh, share it with your friends and i will see you in the next video bye bye